Hi, Jose. <laughs> Hi. Sorry about that. No, Technical no worries. <laughs> it happens. It's the time that we're in. It happens. Um, but yeah. I was just I was just telling the folks who are joining us right now that um, we had a Know Your Rights training in Spanish uh, about two weeks ago. So if they're looking to find any of that information, they can go on to our Instagram or Facebook page. You can find uh, that Know Your Rights in Spanish, which will be a similar conversation to today. We also had a conversation in regards to mental health, um, TPS updates. I know we had a question in the comments. We also have something in regards to DACA updates. So I continue to encourage you all to go on to our social media platforms um, if you're looking for anything like that. Um, so um, today's conversation, as I mentioned, will be around Know Your Rights. Um, I do want to remind folks that we're not lawyers. We're simply providing information that is extremely important for the immigrant community. Um, if you have any questions, um, I recommend that you save them to the very end. We'll have a few minutes. Um, we won't take any personal questions, unfortunately, but we will try our best to answer any questions that you might have. Um, but I'm excited that Jose is joining us today. Um, so Jose. So I think you froze this time. <laughs> oh no. What was that question? Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and the work that you do with IDP? Sure. So I work for the Immigrant Defense Project, uh, mm -hmm. where I'm a senior uh, policy associate. Uh, I'm originally from Mexico, but when I was about four or five, my family moved to South Texas, uh, down in the Rio Grande Valley, uh, deep South Texas. Uh, and um, for the last, I would say, maybe uh, almost a decade, I guess, I've been working mm -hmm. in this field and either in immigration work or in other forms of advocacy work revolving with immigrant communities. Uh, before this, with uh, before this, I was actually the legislative coordinator for the Justice for Farm Worker campaign in the state of New York, uh, and currently as the senior policy associate at, at the Immigrant Defense Project. This past year, we uh, passed another uh, important bill in the state of New York called the Protect Our Courts Act, which I can happily talk about later on. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's a little bit of what I do. I, I, I uh, not only inform community members about what their rights are, but also uh, 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 talk about advocacy and trying to get things passed in the state legislature. Yeah, thank you for telling us a little bit about yourself and also the work that you do that with IDP. At the very end, we'll, you know, do another recap as well as, as other types of work that IDP does and how folks can get in contact. Um, but, you know, again, thank you for telling us a little bit about you. Um, I think it's always important that folks are able to connect with, with you and understand that not only do you work in this field, but you also are an immigrant yourself and you understand some of the things that folks might be feeling in terms of fear or anxiety and why it's so important to talk about this conversation today. Um, so I think we can get started. Um, you know, can you tell us a little bit about why it's so extremely important to know your rights right now and what it actually means to, to know your rights? Because, um, you know, there's a lot happening. <laughs> Yeah, no, definitely. I, I mean, the way I see it, uh, I see knowing your rights as having power, uh, mm -hmm. just having the power of information, because as you all know, uh, in this country, especially in the field of immigration, mm -hmm. things are so confusing all the time. And every year, I feel uh, the, the system just gets more and more complicated. So knowing your rights, um, it means you know, knowing that you have rights regardless of your status. And it's really important for folks to know that um, you do have rights. It doesn't matter what your status is in this country. Um, it, it's very important to know what your rights are. Uh, and also just, you know, in, in case you do uh, encounter ICE or Border Patrol agents, knowing your rights at that moment could actually help you in the future if you, mm -hmm. in case you do are, are facing an immigration case. Uh, so these are all, uh, it's very important to know your rights because th these things could affect your, your legal case. Yeah, and I know a lot of people, especially when you start talking about know your rights or family preparedness, um, a lot of folks have anxiety and sometimes we go into denial and think that maybe if we just ignore some of this stuff that it's better to just not have a conversation about it. Um, and it's in those moments when you really wish you did know um, what exactly your rights are because as Jose said, everyone under the US Constitution has rights regardless, regardless of their status. Um, and it's why immigration organizations are always pushing this information forward because we do want um, immigrants to feel empowered, especially in really scary times. Um, so I think one of the questions that we always get from people is, um, and as we've seen time and time again, that um, immigrants' rights always get violated. And so they always say, well, you know, if, if this is going to happen anyways, why should I know this? 
Yeah, well, especially, I, I mean, I, I talked a little bit up at the beginning, you know, knowing your rights invokes mm -hmm. power, but also specifically at this time, especially since like 2017, when uh, the this current administration took over, we've seen an increase in ICE activity uh, across the board. Uh, just for one example, in New York State, for example, we saw an increase of 1700, a 1700% increase in ICE activity outside of courthouses. Um, so, you know, just knowing that this activity is increasing, I think it should give people more uh, the opportunity to not know just what their rights are right now at this point. But mm -hmm. like I said, if uh, if you encounter eyes at home or on, on the street, if you can invoke those rights that you have, those essentially could lend themselves to help you at that moment. And then if it doesn't help you at that moment, maybe on, later on in, in, with whatever immigration case you might have. Uh, so these, these things are important to know because we, we can't let the system take advantage of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think something else that I always like to point out to people is that even if you're not directly impacted, it's really good to know these things because if you see something happening, you can defend your community members around you. You can tell them what their rights are. Um, so continue to share these resources. But, you know, now that we've talked a little bit about the importance of why folks should know their rights, not only just in this moment, just, but just in general, um, can you tell us what, uh, what rights people have inside of their home if an ICE officer was to come um, to their house? Yeah. So first off, I think it's important to define what a home is. Mm -hmm. uh, a home means uh, could mean the house you live in. It could mean the apartment you live in. It could mean uh, a room inside a home or a room inside the apartment. A lot of people share an apartment with multiple roommates or a house with multiple roommates. And mm -hmm. um, your home could be that room where you live in uh, right. or a space in a shelter. A lot of folks uh, live in shelters. And if, if there's a space designated for you in a shelter, that's that could be considered your home. So that's the kind of the first thing that folks should just take into account. Uh, second, most important thing uh, is do not open the door for anybody. Uh, mm -hmm. And that includes, of course, ICE agents. Um, you know, they come and knock on the door. And I, I always uh, let folks know that, you know, even if you open the door a little bit, that kind of lends them the opportunity to say that you welcome them into your home and gives them the opportunity to kind of make their way in by force. Or, you know, if you if you kind of just stay out of the way, you just let, lend themselves to come in. So it's very important for folks to know to, to not open the door for anybody, especially if it's somebody that says it's the police or ICE. Uh, ICE does say a lot of the times use these ruses where they say that uh, they are police officers. Sometimes they mm -hmm. even use vests that say police. Um, and that happens a lot in New York City where I live. Uh, so if that's the case, then ask them for identification ask them, okay, can I see your identification? Can you put it down the, the slit of the, of the door? Uh, sometimes they say they have a warrant um, and uh, that's, that gives them the opportunity to come in. However, most of the time, and if, in fact, most of all the times they have administrative warrants that mm -hmm. they don't have judicial warrants. Uh, judicial warrant is a, a warrant signed by a judge. Uh, administrative warrant is just something that they have signed by a supervisor probably at their office. That's what they most of the time have. That does not mean that they can open and come into your home uh, to do a search or anything like that. So uh, if they do have something like that, ask them to put that warrant underneath the door, take a photo of it. Um, but again, yeah, if it doesn't say signed by a judge, judge so-and-so, that means it's not a judicial warrant. And that means mm -hmm. that they don't have a right to come into your apartment. So I would say leave the door closed. Do not let them come in. Um, if they, if you do let them come in, because most people are, are good people and, and will let them uh, we'll let folks come in, um, then, you know, you still have the right to change your mind and say, I don't want you to be in my space. Please leave. You have the right to remain silent. You have the right to say, I'm not going to speak to anybody without an attorney present. Um, even if they start searching your place, you have the right to say, I do not consent. I do not give you the right to search my apartment or my home. I do not give you the right to take my fingerprints. Sometimes they do it by force. If you mm -hmm. invoke these rights, again, these are things that you can later on say, if you take notes afterwards, these, I invoked my rights during that time. They did this without my permission. Yeah. 
Um, and I think a good follow up to that is, um, you know, you mentioned um, that you like whatever happens during those moments, if they don't um, listen to what you're saying, um, you know, can people uh, document what's happening and how can that help them? Yeah, so people can document what's happening. I mean, they can take notes definitely after this encounter. Um, during the encounter, though, if you are going to take your phone out and record, you are allowed to do that, but you should say, you know, I'm taking my phone out to record what's happening right now. Um, we, I think folks need to know that um, ICE officers are armed and it depends on your locality. But here in, in New York City, we have seen ICE officers armed with not just, uh, you know, like regular guns, but also automatic weapons. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind. Um, but you do, if you, if you take your phone out, just say, I'm going to take my phone out so I can record this. That is a right that you have. Yeah. So just to um, remind folks, especially for those that are just joining us, in terms of your rights, make sure you don't open your door, um, ask who's at the door, um, see what kind of paperwork they have with them, if they have a warrant, make sure that it has your name on it, make sure that it's signed by a judge, and make sure that if by some reason you decide to open the door, because as Jose said, a lot of times out of fear, and because they think that it's police officers, you think you have to open, um, you can still tell them to leave. Um, but most importantly, you can document um, anything and everything that's happening during those moments. Just remind folks um, that you're, you're pulling your phone out. Um, so I think now that we've established what rights um, folks have inside of their home, I think it's also important to cover what kind of rights people have outside of their home in a public space. Same kind of uh, idea. If you're walking down the street and an ICE officer, encounter, you encounter an ICE officer, um, you have the right to not consent to a personal search. Everybody has this right. You can say, I don't consent for you to, to search my body. Do not give folks any documents, uh, especially false documents. That's something that's very important, mm -hmm. you know, to, 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 to also know. Um, you, cannot, you should not give them any documents especially false documents right. to it to these officers uh but yes uh, the same thing you know you can you can say i don't give you uh permission to search search my body i don't give you permission permission to take uh, my fingerprints uh even again if they do this uh, um without your consent you can invoke these rights uh also say uh, you know am i free to go as if they say you're free to go uh you know step away from that situation as soon as you can yeah. So I know that um, right now we're giving a lot of information to those that are following us. I do want to remind them that they can find um, an overview and more resources similar to what we're having, we're talking about right now from other organizations on informed immigrants. Um, you can find red cards as well. We always encourage folks to carry those with them because in moment of panic, sometimes you forget um, all of these top pointers and it's easy to hand over to an ICE officer. Um, usually on one side, it'll be in Spanish and on the other side, it'll be in English. Um, so again, you can go on to informedimmigrant.com. You can go to IDP. Uh, there's just a variety of different places where you can find um, information about Know Your Rights. Um, so um, again, so I think going back to the public conversation, something else that folks always worry about um, not only being stopped in the streets, but what's also very common is when they get pulled over. What can you say to folks in terms of what their rights are? Yeah, and again, this uh, depends on state by state because, uh, you know, right. recently in New York, uh, undocumented folks now have the opportunity to get driver's licenses. Um, and that's not the same case in every state. But like, uh, you know, ICE stopping folks on the street, they can also stop your car. Mm -hmm. But again, you have the similar rights, you can invoke them. You can say, I do not consent for you to search my vehicle. Uh, if they ask you to come out of the, of the vehicle, you can um, say, I don't give you permission to search my, my body. I, uh, I wish to remain silent. I, uh, I'm not gonna speak to you unless I have an attorney present. Um, ask who these people are. You know, that's I think one of the first things you folks need to uh, ask you know, who's stopping you? Uh, is it the local sheriff? Is it a, a police department? Um, if it's an ICE officer, then um, they, they should identify themselves. But again, they do use a lot of tricks and, and a lot of uh, lies sometimes where they, they uh, pretend to be police officers. Uh, so the, if, if that's the case, ask for identification. If you don't see your city's police department badge, you know, that's yeah. probably an indicator that it's not 
your local police department if they if it's just a generic police vest that they have on or if they're not they're in an unmarked vehicle there's a chance that you know that could be an ice officer i think folks need to know that you know uh there's a lot of info sharing that happens within departments. Uh, if folks cross the border in this, uh, the southern border, for example, if you get caught by border patrol, you, your uh, fingerprints are automatically taken and then they're shared. Uh, if you get arrested, your fingerprints go to the FBI and then they're shared across uh, different departments. So ICE probably has your information if they are looking for you because they do share a lot of information with every other department. So these are these are things that folks should should just be aware of. Yeah, thank you for, for explaining what some of the rights folks have um, inside of, of their home and then also um, if, in their vehicle and what, what that means and if anything changes. Um, I think something else that folks have been asking most recently, especially over the last few months, um, is in regards to, and I know we just talked about your rights in, in, like, in public, but um, I do want to reiterate, like, you know, what about when it comes to a protest? Um, like, what kind of rights can folks have during those moments if they get, you know, pulled aside? Yeah, and we have we actually saw, especially this past summer, when there was a, a mm -hmm. heightened sense of uh, uh, in, uh, more protest across the country here in New York yeah. City. We did see um, ICE agents try and arrest uh, an individual, actually an American citizen, on the streets. Uh, but the same case goes if, if you uh, encounter ICE officers on on the street. Uh, you can tell them, you know, I don't give you permission to search my body. I don't give you. Uh, I, I, I'm, stay silent you have the right to remain silent um and again ask you know like what is you have a warrant is it a judicial warrant or is it an administrative warrant that makes a big difference if it's a judicial uh warrant uh you know that that gives them the opportunity to to do more but again i think another thing that folks should should know is that even an administrative warrant does lends lends them the opportunity to get arrested uh by ice so when you're out on the street that kind of lends itself to that's that's different when you're home they can't come into your home with with an administrative warrant but they can arrest you and detain you with an administrative warrant yeah, thank you for that. And then um, just to reiterate from from the previous conversation, um, in regards to recording, does anything change when when it's out in public? I would say the same thing. Um, you know, if you are going to record, you know, if and there's people around, officers mm -hmm. around, if you're going to take your phone out, um, know that you these people are armed. Uh, say that you're taking your phone out to record, uh, but you are and 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 passer buyers can also you know take their phone out i would recommend not going live mm -hmm. uh, because a lot of folks have that instinct i'm going to go live uh it's important to uh, uh respect people's identities during right. this time uh, i i would say it's more more valuable to provide these uh these this footage to uh, to attorneys that are taking care of this case, or if they're going to use it for the media to blur faces, because uh, protecting identity is also very important. So don't, if you are going to record, it's better to share that later and with people that you know might help not go live where anybody can use this footage later on, especially if faces are not being blurred. Mm -hmm. That's extremely important to know because I know in, in this day and age right now, it's just easier for people to just stream live or quickly just pop up their phone, take a video and post it um, without thinking that there might be consequences after. Um, so thank you for mentioning that. Um, so now that we're reaching towards the end of our conversation, can you remind folks what some of the top information they should know about Know Your Rights? Like if they're going to remember anything, what are the top things that they should know? Do not open the door. Mm -hmm. Stay inside your home. Uh, know that, you know, it depends, especially in your home, like you can go outside and, the, and, and if you live in an apartment building, that kind of could be your home, but also folks, that also gives uh, ICE officers the opportunity to walk in down, up and down, you know, hallways. Do not come outside. I would say, um, you know, do not open the door, remain silent. And also just, you know, say that you do not consent for a search or, or, or your fingerprints to be taken. Okay. Um, thank you so much for that, Jose. And then lastly, how can people contact um, IDP and, and for what kind of things can they contact you all? Yeah, I, we have a bunch of resources on our website. Uh, know your rights. 
dot m i m m defense dot o r g, and you can find a lot of uh, information that I just provided there on our website. You can go to our uh, also m defense i m m defense dot o r g slash k y r, and then there's going to be so many so much more information there as well. Um, but these that uh, these are good the good resources that we have for for community members to 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 take in in English and in Spanish and in other languages. Yeah, thank you for that, Jose. And then I do also want to remind folks again that you can go on to informedimmigrant.com or immigranteinformado.com for Spanish um, to find any resources in regards to know your rights as well. Um, and I do want to reiterate that there's um, available um, documents where you can print, up, print out your personal red cards, which we also believe are extremely important for folks to carry with them. That reminds them um, what the conversation that Jose and I just had in regards to what your rights are in public. Um, and again, there are in English and in Spanish, uh, usually on one side each. Um, and you can carry those with you and hand over to an ICE officer if you were ever to engage um, anyone like that. Um, but Jose, thank you so much again for joining us. Um, I can't say enough how important this conversation is. I'm going to give it a few minutes to see if folks have any questions for Jose or myself. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining us. Let us know if you have questions. Um, if you are ever looking for resources in regards to mental health or um, anything in regards to DACA updates, TPS updates, please visit our page, Informed Immigrant. Follow us on um, Facebook or Instagram. We also have had previous live streams similar to this one um, where we host other conversations. Um, so please go on to our page. They're, they're uploaded on there. Um, so we are getting one question about having Know Your Rights resources in more than um, one language in English and in Spanish. And we do. Um, you can go on to our page. Um, it's, it's not directly from Informed Immigrant, but we do uh, point out to other organizations that do have it in multiple languages. Um, so again, encourage you to go visit either IDP or informedimmigrant.com where you can find some of those resources. Um, and then we also have another question about um, New York and ICE. Um, out of how, sorry, I think they're talking about the uh, POCA, the policy about um, ICE in, in New York City courts. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so earlier this year um, in July, um, the coalition, the ICE of the Courts Coalition, headed by IDP, um, and the help, of course, of our legislators, passed the Protect Our Courts Act, which would keep ICE officers from detaining or arresting people going to court, at court, or leaving court. It was passed uh, in July by both the Assembly and the Senate. We're awaiting the governor's signature mm -hmm. on, on that. Um, we uh, are hearing that hopefully after this election, the governor will be hopefully signing. Um, in any case, you know, keep tabs on our on our Instagram page, our Twitter page, our Facebook page. We are going to um, keep people up to date on on the status of that law, um, and hopefully it will get signed by the governor um, before the year's over. Yeah, I I hope that it passes as well because I know that right now one of the things that folks always fear is that if they get stopped by police officers in general, and if they go to court, um, they're worried that ICE might show up and detain them there, which we have seen happen in the past. So policies like those are extremely important for keeping all of our communities safe. Um, it is um, worth noting that um, I did, a, a lawsuit by the Attorney General, the New York State Attorney General, did she, she did win a case against DHS and ICE at the moment, they should not be arresting people going to court or leaving court or at court um, because they there was a lawsuit that was won by the by the uh, New York Attorney General. This, the, if New York Governor Andrew Cuomo signs the bill, though, that would make it the law of the land. And it, and uh, even if there's an appeal, which there currently is an appeal by DHS, um, it, it won't be uh, stricken down if if Governor Cuomo signs this bill. Hopefully, he will. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jose. Um, so I'm going to give it another minute to see if folks um, have any questions for myself um, or for Jose. Um, but for those that are joining us, I can't tell you enough <laughs> to go and follow Immigrant Defense Project. They're based in New York. They do amazing work. Um, and also, um, of course, follow Informed Immigrant. We're constantly updating our page and the resources that we have. Um, you can find, again, anything from Know Your Rights, Family Preparedness, um, Policy Updates, etc. 
Um, but since we're not getting any additional questions, Jose, I do want to thank you again for, for joining us um, uh, uh, to have such an important conversation, telling us a little bit about the work that you do in New York City and with Immigrant Defense Project. So um, again, thank you so much for joining us. Um, I look forward to working with you again. Yeah, thank you for having awesome. me. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, everyone, for joining us. Bye. Bye.